Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Tomahawk Scout Reservation Summer 2021 Camp Orientation. My name is Brian Halloran. I am the Tomahawk Director and I am proud to be serving you all this year and thank you so much for coming back to Tomahawk. If you're new to Tomahawk, welcome aboard. I think you'll be pleased with all of the diverse programs that we have uh, from older scout programs to merit badges to troop activities. We have a very balanced program and uh, we're proud to be serving so many scouts and leaders this summer. Today we're going to go through our COVID-19 uh, forecast expectations for next summer. We're going to cover the new items for next year. We're going to go through all of our programs, talk about our all-star program and other camping opportunities. We'll go through preparing for camp and promoting camp as well as going through the upcoming dates and important deadlines that you should all be aware of. As we're going through this presentation, there are a few documents that have been linked below in the brand live uh, webinar service that we're using. Please feel free to reference those as we're going along and also have the Tomahawk website open. So last summer, uh, our COVID-19 protocols were pretty strict and we were going through those uh, as we were learning more things. And we have learned so much since last summer and our plan for next summer is to build on the success that we had last year. The American Camping Association did a survey and a study uh, about all of the camps that were in operation. And of the 486 camps that they had in operation, that they had information from, 74 of those camps had a presence of COVID-19 cases. And of those, only 102 campers and staff were diagnosed with a positive case of COVID-19. Now at Tomahawk, we were lucky enough with all of our protocols in place and the compliance of those protocols with everybody that we did not have one single confirmed case uh, at camp or anybody calling us to notify us that they had tested positive for COVID after camp, tracing it back to camp. So we ran really successfully and that was due to the mitigation strategies that we had in place. We were using social distancing, we were uh, limiting group sizes, we were using face coverings, we had changed our programs to work uh, around these mitigation strategies. We were doing daily health screenings as well as a screening when everybody came in. We were increasing our cleaning all around and we even had a cohort model in place. We will be continuing a lot of these things next summer. We are going to be using social distancing and face coverings quite a bit. We are going to reduce our group sizes as much as possible, uh, but our cohorting model, we're hoping that we will be able to move away from that and provide as much individual choice to scouts as possible. We want scouts to be able to schedule a badge um, and then go to another badge and not have to do the same thing that their patrols did. And though we don't know everything about what next summer is going to look like, we are planning towards having individual choice uh, a part of the program that we'll be offering. Now, of course, those things may change. Um, conditions may be different. We don't know what the pandemic is going to look like come summer, but at this point, we're forecasting for individual choice to be a big part of the program this summer. And that was a big part of the feedback that we got from people. So we'll still be doing a lot of these mitigation strategies, but we're moving in that direction for individual choice. So what's new next summer? Lots of new things. There's always new things happening at Tomahawk. One of the big ones that's going to be uh, implementation right now is scouting event. We are moving away from the summer camp management system. That's where we have tracked billing and uh, had you renew your reservations as well as sign scouts up for programs. The scouting event system is uh, the same system that you've used to sign up for winter camp, camperies, University of Scouting, and merit badge days. So it should look pretty familiar to many of you, uh, but there's some new features that we'll be using. This system will allow us to receive online payments via e-check or a direct bank transfer or credit card. There will be processing fees or convenience fees for those that choose to use a credit card, but there will not be any processing fees for anybody using the bank transfer. So just take that number off the bottom of your check and put it in 
and you'll be able to pay online without having to pay any convenience fees. In addition to some of these features, there is a parent portal that allows you to allow parents to go in and make direct payments themselves into the system. You can put additional contacts into your reservation so we can have multiple email addresses listed for your troop. There's a wide variety of reports that you can use that can help organize your week at camp as well as pull advancement information after the fact uh, where all these where all that merit badge records are stored. And so with this, you won't have to fill out any blue cards prior to camp. Uh, you'll sign your scouts up and there is even a report you can pull that will print off blue cards for you at the end, if that's something you desire. We are improving some facilities all over camp, so we've been actively over the fall and the spring been tapping into a grant fund to improve our shower facilities um, across the board. So one of the big projects that's going on right now is the Navajo Shower House, and this is in the basement of the Central Services Building, and it's long overdue for a remodel. And so it's going to have individual shower stalls, individual bathrooms, and then even three family bathrooms all being uh, handicap accessible. So currently, the basement has been completely gutted, and we've got contractors in there uh, starting to work on building those out. A project that's further along, however, will affect many of you. Every single one of our Scout BSA camps is having remodels done on their shower buildings. So on the youth sides, there are now individual doors leading into an individual shower stall. So behind that door is one shower, the door locks. Anybody can use this shower now. Girls, boys, men, women, anybody can use the, these showers. Uh, the locks on the doors do have a in use or occupied indicator. So that will help reduce the number of people pulling on the latch as you're, uh, once you're in there. But this will greatly improve the speed in which people can use showers and experience this area. So if the leader side is pretty full, leaders can go over to this side and shower. Um, if there are more girls than boys at the shower building, it won't be a big deal because there'll be plenty of doors available. So we're pretty excited about that. That's a large grant and uh, we're happy to be using it. A big change this year for our a la carte programs is gonna be for our Older Scout program. So the Older Scout program in the past has been a different bundled packages of program. And these bundled packages all contain different activities. You had the Trex program, which had rock climbing and zip line, high ropes, you did biking with that. It was a whole slew of different activities. After last summer, we found that we were able to logistically manage making individual schedules for each scout. So scouts, older scouts will submit ranked choices of all the older scout activities that they want to do. And then we will take a look at that and we will schedule those out for them. And that is going to be very, very helpful for scouts that, you know, might be afraid of heights, but really want to do a lot of biking or a scout that doesn't like water, but they, they really want to go rock climbing. Um, we will be able to custom tailor a schedule to every individual scout. And this is going to give us the flexibility to provide uh, scale up and down based on a week, depending on the demand that we see. One week, we might do a lot of whitewater trips. The next week, we might be doing a ton of biking. Uh, the next week after that, it might be pretty heavy on rock climbing. It really all depends on what scouts uh, are interested in for that particular week. And so our staff are really excited about this. And based on the reactions we had from people last summer with ranking their choices and having a custom schedule for their patrol, uh, having a custom schedule down to the individual buddy group is going to be pretty strong. So we're really excited about this. And the program catalog has been laid out with these different tiers. So you have tier one would be an entry level type of, type of program, um, primarily for 13 year olds, and it would build up to a tier two or a tier three. And so the biking option here is an example where you start with a double track or a road pump track and, of mountain biking, and you get to practice those mountain biking skills. And then you move up to the single track, which is a narrower trail through the woods of Tomahawk. After that, 
you would qualify for a single track off-site. And beyond that, you could tack on cycling merit badge. Now, does this mean that you have to do tier one one year and then wait another year to do tier two and then another year to do tier three? No. If you want to do tier, tier three, but you've never done tier one or two, you simply just request that you do all three of those and we'll schedule them in uh, succession so that you would do tier one on Monday, tier two on Tuesday, and tier three on Wednesday. So they all work together and you can do tier three in any given year. You just have to make sure that you're building up to that with the progression in our older scout programs. Last summer, we had commissary food for everybody, and that was one of our COVID-19 mitigation strategies to spread people out and, and prevent congregating in different areas. We were serving cafeteria style out of the Navajo dining hall, and we had people sitting outside primarily and a few people sitting inside eating, spaced out, of course. And so we feel confident that next summer we'll be able to provide some dining hall uh, service in both Chippewa and White Pine. Chippewa will be receiving dining hall service out of uh, at lunch and supper, and ingredients will be delivered for breakfast. White pine will be served lunch out of the dining shelter, and breakfast and supper ingredients will be delivered to the campsite. And Sioux Camp will be completely commissary style patrol method cooking in the campsites. Ingredients delivered there, so there's no rummaging through the cooler, there's no grocery shopping beforehand, we provide you the ingredients and just the ingredients that you need for that meal. And this went over as a big hit last summer with people cooking their own food. 30% of the people that went to camp last summer said that they really enjoyed cooking their own food for each, for all three meals and that they would like to continue doing that. 40% said that they would like a hybrid model and another 30% said that they would like a more traditional model. Uh, the model that you see here is scaled back a little bit from our original model. Originally, we wanted Chippewa to have three meals in the dining hall, two meals in the dining shelter for White Pine, and one meal delivered to Sioux Camp Hot. Uh, but looking at our COVID-19 protocols and our staffing structures, we're scaling that down to two meals in Chippewa, one meal in White Pine, and all meals being commissary in Sioux Camp. So lunch and supper will be in the dining hall for Chippewa, lunch will be in the dining shelter for White Pine, and all meals will be in the campsite for Sioux Camp. Uh, of course, if you camp in Chippewa and you would like to have commissary food service, we can provide that to you. Uh, we'll have plenty of outdoor open air seating areas for people to eat uh, outside and around the dining hall. Um, and we'll be employing our COVID-19 mitigation strategies for distancing and spacing around those areas, keeping troops away from other troops. But of course, uh, within your own patrols and troops, you will be able to sit next to each other on a picnic table. We will be continuing our Sunday start of our programs, and this will be continuing into the future. Our staff really enjoyed it. Uh, in the past, we've had to have a skeleton crew on check-in days, which last year we had everybody there for check-in days. And our staff had to take turns taking days off throughout the week. Um, and we really enjoyed having a, a full crew there for check-in, as well as having the staff all off on the same day off. There was less management of staff that were still around, um, and the staff had uh, a better chance of bonding uh, on the weekends. And uh, this is a, what we find is a traditional summer camp schedule that you can find at any other scout camp or any other sleepaway camp. Off-season rentals of our family island cabins and a few of our other guest cabins, doctor cabins, and staff cabins. So this year we opened up a lot of our cabins, uh, Levine Lodge, Pontiac Lodge, and Decora Lodge for troops to rent in the off-season. Families could rent these out and enjoy camp year-round. So we had a bunch of people out in the fall. We have some people out in the winter. These registrations are open and live right now, and you can go ahead and book a really, really nice cabin at camp. These are great cabins. They've got wood-burning fireplaces. Uh, they're just amazing. And then in the spring and the fall, our family island cabins are available. But uh, family island cabins aren't heated in the winter. We just have the three lodges heated in the wintertime. 
So check this out. You can access it on the Family Island page and uh, book your cabin today and get more camping. This year, brand new, we are going to be doing a family adventure week, and this will be hosted week three. We're going to be doing this in White Pine, and uh, this is a lot like Family Island, but you'll be tent camping on the platforms up in White Pine, but we are going to be providing a little bit more program and more of a camp feel than what you might experience at Family Island. So we'll be running programs for families in the morning, um, and then the beach will be open and staffed all afternoon. And so there'll be lots of opportunities there. So if you want another extra week of camp as an entire family, uh, you can certainly sign up. The cost for this is only going to be $350 for a family. If you want food service on top of that, you'll pay extra, but you're welcome to bring your own food and cook it. And it's a steal of a deal for how much program you're getting for an entire family. And uh, in addition to this, we've opened up for Family Island for two more weeks this summer on either side of our season. So you can sign up for additional Family Island weeks um, before and after, and we'll have staff out there to work with you. New segments. Uh, by popular demand, I don't know how many times I've heard it, but people have said a Scout is Clean segment for showering at camp. And so there is a shower at camp segment this year, and that is to celebrate our showering remodels. We are adding a tenured segment, so you'll get a segment your first year for that says one. You can get one your second year for two, and after your seventh year, you'll get um, you can you can earn a segment for seven years coming to camp. Um, there will be a history segment for going through the history museum up at the Welcome Center as well. We've been doing some improvements in our welding area, and we're moving the shop to a location closer to the Welcome Center. So it'll have its own dedicated welding and metal workshop, and that will be located up by the Welcome Center, uh, just past the old entrance to White Pine, if you remember where that is, by the Randall Farm. And so that'll be pretty nice having that closer to the Welcome Center, and we'll have more space and uh, a few new pieces of equipment that we're really excited to roll out. New t-shirt designs as well as an online trading post. We piloted an online trading post this fall and we plan on running one this spring. And what that's gonna do is help units buy a few items ahead of time. If you've been frustrated in the past by us not having the right size or the color that you, you liked, we were out of that, uh, you'll be able to pre-order those items and pick them up at camp. Now, of course, we're still gonna be doing the custom t-shirt that you see here. And this will be running just like any other year. You can pre-order this, they'll mail it to your house, but there'll be an additional online trading post where you'll be able to buy items in advance and we'll have them waiting for you when you come to camp. This would include collectible slushy mugs, leader mugs, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and other collectible souvenir type items. So we'll be really excited about this. This will be rolled out April 15th. So you'll have um, a good month and a half two months before camp starts to place those orders and take a look at those. And if we see extra demand in certain areas, that'll give us time to order more of those items. So you'll have to check that out April 15th. Great, so that covers all of our new things for this year. Uh, now I'd like to take some time to talk through our uh, program catalog. So this is available online right now and it is one of the documents that is included in the brand live here area here. So if you wanted to open that up, that's great. If not, you can just follow along with me as we go. So this is our 2021 program catalog. And I think all of you have seen the one from last year, but uh, we're just gonna go through this and talk about some of the features in here and just make sure that you're paying attention to all these items uh, because it's pretty important um, as we go through the planning process. So the first page inside the cover is this leader planning checklist, and we'll go through this a little bit more in depth later, but uh, all of the items and check boxes for you here to uh, accomplish to be a, make for a successful summer. So you'll have to check that out at another time. We'll come back to that. Uh, we've got some quick facts, some links, um, information on food service, camp fees, uh, we'll have partial fees for adults like always, 306 is our youth fee, 124 for adults, uh, our brief payment plan, and information about camperships. 
got our schedule here outlining our morning, afternoon, and evening programs, as well as our merit badges here. You'll see a change to the merit badge block titles. The merit badge blocks are still the same, but we have 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. Uh, so we'll have those two sessions in the morning and then alternating Monday, Wednesday, Friday versus Tuesday and Thursday badges. So your A badges are Monday and Wednesday and Friday. Your B badges are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Some badges will take over two of those blocks and we'll talk more about that in a second. So this program catalog, you're going to want to send this out to all of your scouts as soon as you can and uh, they should be reviewing this with their parents. And this page is really important for them uh, to outline the steps that they need to take in planning their programs and going out from there. So their step one is gonna be choose their merit badges. After that, they're gonna rank their troop activities, then they're gonna rank older scout activities if they're eligible for those, and then they're gonna submit their preferences online. And uh, we'll come back to this in a second. So our merit badge details here, Going down our list, we've got a bunch of merit badges available this year. Uh, we did narrow the list down from our normal uh, list of merit badges to take out the least popular ones, and we'll be offering those as troop activities. But these have all been scheduled already, and scouts from different troops, we anticipate that they will be able to uh, take these badges together in a group, and we'll be able to manage those groups through distancing and mask wearing where needed. Uh, you'll see X's and O's here. So if you see an X or an O, that means that this merit badge is being offered during that session. So Brown C, for example, is being offered during 1A and 1B. So this is going to be in the first session every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Uh, you'll see an O in that spot, which means that you need to attend both of those sessions. However, Camping Merit Badge is 1A or 2A. You do not need to attend both of those sessions but you only need to attend one of those sessions. You'll also see cost information as well as prerequisites on here. And as you go down to the next page, this will list out the same merit badges with extra commitments and different notes in here. As we go down further, it'll bring us to another listing of merit badges. And you'll see that the ones on the bottom here are, you can sign up for these as a troop activity. So these would be scheduled either in the afternoon uh, or in the case of astronomy, it would be scheduled at night from 7 p.m. until midnight when the stars are out. So you'll see the same information there. Uh, some of these are scheduled already. Uh, some of these would be scheduled for your troop. Um, you'll see in here that there is a column that lists minimum number of scouts per troop. Uh, there are many merit badges, almost all of the merit badges call for some interaction between different scouts whether that close contact is because of a game or it's a swimming rescue or somebody needs help holding something while doing a craft, almost all merit badges require somebody else to be there as a buddy and to help. And so we are gonna be requiring that if you have a scout going to a merit badge, they need to have another person with them, preferably a scout that's also taking that merit badge. And uh, this doesn't need to be the same scout for every single merit badge session. They could be with Bobby Scout for camping, but then they could be with Billy Scout uh, for swimming merit badge. Just one other person there to make sure that there's somebody from their troop that is within their circle of people that they can be in close contact with, that they can do things closer with. But for those troop activity ones, like astronomy, bird study, geology, we are gonna be asking that there's more scouts there to, to uh, to make it possible for us to offer this as a sort of special request. We're also asking that troops only request one of these because they do take up a decent amount of time and we wanna keep that balance between advancement and activities. As we go down lower, we get into the older scout grid. And this is where you're gonna see those different tiers and just different activities. You'll see that there's more activities in here than there have been in the past and that's because Instead of offering 10 bundled package programs, we're able to offer 22 different older scout activities versus full-fledged programs. So you'll build these up. And so scouts will rank these choices as much as they can. And we'll go over that in a little bit. 
So we've got all kinds of troop activities, um, some of your favorites and a, a few sprinkled in new ones, but we've got all kinds of these and uh, everything from ice cream outpost to troop boating uh, to rifle shooting, conservation projects, troop swim, horseback rides, bison visit, geocaching, fire tower, aqua trampoline, history museum tour, which is new, um, first class aquatics, specifically to work on those different advancement skills. And then there's, these are these merit badges uh, that you can sign up for as a, a troop. So you can include one of these merit badges in um, your troop activity rankings, if you so choose. Of course, our logging camp. This is a fun area. Everybody has a chance to go out there here and uh, hike out to the area, do branding, sparkle climbing, two-person saw. Uh, there's blacksmithing out here. It's a, it's a lot of fun. There's usually some wildlife or goats uh, out there, and it's a five-mile hike to get there and back, which works out really well for advancement requirements for first-year scouts that are needing to go through there. Of course, we have our first-year camper program, Brown Sea, which goes through a bunch of these outdoor advancement programs. And this is designed to just expose these scouts to as many different outdoor skills as possible and uh, take that work back and get tested out by adult leaders back in the campsite. So that will still be continuing this year. And then we get into the section of our older scout programs. And this outlines the different tiers, some of the costs and prerequisites. It reviews a lot of the things that are in that outline matrix, um, but has more pictures for describing what these activities are to scouts. So we've got our climbing programs. Um, we have a tier two rock climbing. So if you've done high ropes or the mega tower, you qualify for doing rock climbing. Our ATV program, we have a safety riding course, which does require that you do a e-learning course before you come to camp. That takes the class work, classroom work out of it and makes the course more hands-on. After you've done this, you can do the ATV trail ride um, and get even more uh, riding in, which is a lot of fun. We've got our aqua rig raft, which is a, a blast. There is a big blob and a rope swing on here, and this is located up in White Pine. Our sailing programs, we have some amazing sailing programs. So you build up from big boat sailing and small boat sailing. And then after you've done those, you can do windsurfing or catamaran sailing. We really want scouts in the windsurfing program or the catamaran sailing activity. We really want those scouts to be in small boat sailing merit badge. Um, they're complex sailing things and we wanna make sure that they're focusing on those as much as possible. So you need to have either had sailing merit badge before or currently be taking it to do the tier two sailing programs. We've got offsite whitewater trips, we both canoeing and kayaking. These are a lot of fun. They take the entire day and uh, you need to be 14 in order to participate in these. And units will be providing transportation for these events. We do not anticipate that we'll be able to use our 15 passenger vans and take scouts from different troops and put them all into the same van. So we will need the assistance of adult leaders to take care of transportation for us. Once you get to the top of the, uh, the put-in point for these, these areas, we can assist adult leaders with the shuttling of their vehicles back because it was just one person in the car that would be shuttling. Um, and that can help them get down to get the scouts. But if adults want to participate, that's great. If the adults want to just hang out um, and, and wait for them to come on the bottom and take pictures um, and help with the shuttling, that's great. Uh, but we do encourage adults to participate in these programs. Older scout programs for biking. Well, these are tier level. We already talked about a few of these. We do have our complete angler award program. So this will be continuing with fly fishing, fish and wildlife management, and fishing merit badge. We'll have scouts going to the dam every night uh, to do some fishing there where the fishing's really good. Uh, we'll be using the fly fishing rods and um, we'll be providing bait to people. So we're gonna be doing everything that we can to catch as many fish as possible and really build up our fishing programs at Tomahawk. Our STEM programs, we're still doing those. So we're doing electronics merit badge and electricity. And with those, they earn the STEM Nova Award, whoosh. And then we're doing the Shoot Nova Award 
paired with robotics merit badges. So these are very similar to the programs we've had in the past. Our trades programs, we've broken up metalworking merit badge and welding merit badge, so you could take them separately if you want. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Anybody loves making metal red hot. Um, it's always a good time. We are adding a shooting sports outpost this year. We're collecting all of our really special shooting sports activities from sporting arrows to uh, our paintball markers to our black powder rifles and then our single action shooting range which includes a lever action rifle and double barrel shotgun. So we'll take the scouts, you have to be 14 years of age to do the double barrel shotgun and the lever action rifle and there is a hold harmless agreement that they need to sign. Uh, these will be hosted up at the Welcome Center area and out at the logging camp range. Um, so once again, we will need the help with transportation of scouts around the property to get them there in places. Um, they can certainly bring bikes this year again and use those to get around, or adult leaders can help provide transportation by driving them around. We talked about our pre-order area and our online trading post already. And of course, our family island cabins. These are great, comfortable cabins. They each have their own kitchenette, their own bathroom, their own flush toilet and shower. They've got a bunk room and a, a futon as well, a little living room space, a campfire ring out front, picnic table. They've got access to the beach. We run a few craft programs. There's opportunities to do archery, BB guns, a little climbing. Um, it's a really good family getaway. And it's only $400 for a cabin for the week. You bring your own food. Um, if you'd like even more program and do the camping option, that week three family adventure up in White Pine is really going to be the thing that you're going to want. All right, so that's the end of our program catalog. There's a lot of content in there, but right now the thing that you should be focusing on is sending this out to your families to get them paging through it uh, and taking a look at it. So there's a PDF on the website. It's really easy to send it out. Uh, I tried to keep it under 10 megs so that you could send it out to families. It's time to talk about a really good opportunity for all units. Since everybody is camping currently at Tomahawk and Tomahawk is a Northern Star Council camp, uh, it is connected to another camp, which is Many Point Scout Camp, uh, located up in Northern Minnesota. And Many Point is great. And they do different things at Tom than Tomahawk does. And they've got some really unique programs. And so you can see this kind of breakdown of uh, many point programs versus Tomahawk programs. And, you know, they've got jet skis up at many point and they do a water sports program, which is awesome. They've got tree houses and huck fin overnight. Uh, they got a five stand shotgun area and they do some really great programs. And I, I always get troops asking, how do I experience many point? Uh, we've got some older scouts that want to see a different camp and we, we totally understand that. And, uh, the easiest way to tap into those programs and experience it is through the All-Star program. And Many Point offers just as many All-Star weeks as Tomahawk. And uh, you can send one scout to these. You can send five scouts to these. You do not need to send any adult leaders. It's a completely provisional program. And it's designed to allow scouts to get more camp or it's designed for scouts that had a scheduling conflict with their own troop, but they still wanted to go to camp. I've got scouts that go to this program all summer long and they just love it. They can't get enough. And so I encourage everybody to talk to their scouts, especially their older scouts, about experiencing some of these really cool programs at many point. Um, and I encourage them to go as an all-star because then you can keep your roots at uh, Tomahawk and keep your site, but your older scouts can get the best of both worlds. Maybe they'll attend both camps, um, but uh, yeah, send some adults with or not send some adults with, the option is there for all stars. The next thing we'll be talking about in preparing for camp, one key date that I should talk about is the work party. The work party is going to be hosted on June 4th through the 6th, that's the weekend after Memorial Day. And this weekend is really all about getting camp ready to go. You can see some people here hauling all of the dock sections out uh, to get our docks in. We set up um, uh, all of our tents. We do some small build projects. We fix things up. Um, we get all the boats out. We put those on the rack. And we could really use as many people 
that can help us as possible. We provide the food. Uh, you can camp in your campsite and uh, see what that looks like just as uh, all of the trees are budding. Uh, it's a great program. It's a great time up there. We usually try to do a few uh, fun activities on Saturday afternoon for the scouts. So I encourage everybody to go. There'll be uh, links on the website to RSVP for that so that we know that to count on you and you can even sign up for projects. Promoting camp. There's a lot here. So there are things that we do already. Um, I send out emails to as many people as I possibly can. Uh, we put together a brochure and we mail that to everybody, listing out some of the opportunities that they have at camp. Uh, last summer at camp, people filled out reflection cards and summer before that they did. We mail those reflection cards back out to the scouts. So they fill those out at camp saying what they really liked about camp and what they want to do next year. We mail those packets back out to you unit leaders and you can hand those out to your scouts when you're doing your summer camp presentation. And this summer camp presentation is really important. Before you host this, you should be sending out the program catalogs to all your families, so email them that PDF so they can start looking at it, and then host a summer camp presentation. Have a troop meeting that's dedicated to talking about camp. And the goal in this is answering questions to parents, and this year there's gonna be more questions from parents than ever before. Um, and we'll try to answer those questions for you to get you prepared as best we can. But things at this presentation that are really key, celebrating traditions. Do you have any traditions as a troop that you really hold near and dear? Um, have the older scouts in your troop share their favorite parts of camp. Have them sell the younger scouts on it. And make sure that the parents are there so that the parents are getting this message too. Show pictures from last summer. Um, if you're still doing meetings online or a mixture or a hybrid of those, this is really easy to do through a Zoom presentation. Uh, by sharing your screen and sharing some images. And then it's a really good activity to have the scouts go around and talk about their favorite things about camp. Go through all the programs. Make sure that they didn't miss anything in the program catalogs. Help assist in that whole process of moving them forward and then secure commitments from them. And don't forget about the parents. Uh, your parents of your first year scouts, they're, they're worried about sending their kid away from camp uh, to, to camp for a whole week. Uh, a lot of these parents aren't able to go to camp with their, their son or daughter, and so they're nervous about sending them away. And so make sure that the parents understand why camp is so important, that there's so much self-reliance that's going on here, there's so much social interaction that's happening, and social interaction is uh, something that's really hard to come by these days, and we have a great, wide outdoor environment for them to have that in. And they're outdoors all week long and we'll be using distancing and masking where appropriate. Inside the campsite, you know, troops will be managing what that distancing and that masking looks like. Uh, we'll be managing outside of your campsite in merit badge sessions and other staffed areas. Um, make sure that the parents understand how safe camp is. Let them know about our success last year and let them know about the successes of other camps. Um, you know, Let them know what our mitigation strategies are gonna be uh, what they were last summer, and uh, and let them know what camp is going to look like. Parents are always worried about bears, and some scouts are worried about bears. We have a bear policy so that there isn't an issue with bears, and uh, it's very simple and easy to follow, and it's not really a concern. Um, it's something that we that we manage, and we have policies that protect everybody, including the bears, because we want the bears to be safe too, and. Um, any problem bears that we get that got into a cooler or somebody left some food out, those bears get removed from camp and that's not what the bears want. It's not what we want either. Uh, make sure that your parents understand what communication at camp looks like and how you're gonna communicate with them. And if they wanna get a hold of their, uh, their scout, how do they do that? Uh, is their scout allowed to have cell phones? Um, you know, what's your policy with cell phones? And cell phones are allowed, but they should be managed through the troop and make sure that you have policies that and rules in place that the scouts understand. Make sure that the parents understand homesickness and the difference between a scout, you know, having a, an off day and really being homesick. There's a difference. And um, make sure that parents understand that if their scout calls home for some reason and saying that they're not having a good time, that that parent comes around and talks to the, the adult leadership before making a trip all the way up to camp to pick their son or daughter up. Um, 
make sure that the parents understand what happens if they get uh, if their their child talks to them throughout the week and expresses that they're not having a good time and how getting over some of those barriers and some of those hiccups along the week is all part of our program and building stronger kids into stronger young adults and that's all part of the program we want it to rain a little bit we you know we want them to be a little sore from a uh, from more physical exertion. Um, we, we want them to be experiencing a lot of fun with a mild amount of discomfort so that they can grow and learn through uh, that resilience that they build in that process. And through that, they're gonna have a blast and a really fun time. And the parents really need to understand um, all of that and understand what great experience summer camp can be for their child. And then of course, you're, your families need to understand that there are camperships, that there is a cost to camp, but if they can't afford that full cost, there are scholarships for campers available that have been donated, um, donated to the council to support kids and making sure that kids can go to camp. And those camperships will cover up to half of the amount to go to camp. And so that may, you know, that's a big deal. That's 150 bucks, $153 um, off of their, their their rate to go to camp. They're easy to apply for. You can do it online. Um, credit gets taken, uh, gets put onto your account when they're received. I have not seen camperships uh, disqualified or thrown out. Um, anybody that says that they have a need gets approved for these camperships. Um, so please promote those and make sure that your families understand that they're there if they have a need. So promoting camp is really important, everything from the scouts to the leaders, and now is the time to start. Start planning that summer camp presentation, uh, whether it be a PowerPoint or uh, just a showing of pictures or you've got uh, older scouts lined up to talk about those things. But make sure that you're getting that program catalog out right now. So after you've presented all of the available programs to all of your scouts, after you've distributed the program catalog to all your scouts and your families, their next step is going to be ranking all of their choices and getting that information to you somehow. And this year, Tomahawk has made it really easy for troops to gather that information. On the planning for programs page in the program catalog, there are some steps here for scouts to follow. Uh, they'll go through their merit badges, then they'll rank their troop activities, and then they'll rank their older scout activities that they want to do. Uh, they'll do this using the program listings in that program catalog. Uh, that's what it's designed to do, is to get this information to your scouts. Well, now they want to do X number of programs, and how do they tell you what they want to do and submit those rankings? Uh, in the step four here, the submit your program preferences online. Each of your scouts can do this. There is a QR code here. If they just take out their phone and take their camera app out and point their camera at this, it should pull up that, that link right there. Otherwise, they can type in this shorter URL code into a uh, uh, computer at home and then fill that out. Before they do that, they're gonna need to understand that they're gonna need to have their first name, last name, unit information, their age as of the end of August next summer. They're gonna need to know their merit badge choices, troop program choices, older scout program choices. But the key piece of information here is the email address for the scoutmaster or the camp coordinator. They're going to need to know what this email address is because that is where their survey interests are going to be sent to afterwards. So uh, if you click on this link, it will bring you to the program survey. So we'll just fill this out for myself. Um, Ryan Halloran, I'm going to be, uh, let's say I'll be 12 next summer. I'm in the uh, Cobra Patrol. I'm in Northern Star Council, use my hometown troop. Now, this is the important part, the Scoutmaster's email. This is not their email, this is going to be the Scoutmaster or the Camp Coordinator's email address. So we'll put in my email address here because I am the Camp Coordinator for myself. Now, the next session piece is the morning sessions. So there are four different morning sessions. We have block 1A and B. This is the first session. Block A is gonna be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Block B is Tuesday, Thursday. The session after that is 
in session two, and the same thing block A and B for the different days of the week. So they'll go down this and select different merit badges. Um, I'm going to take Brown C. Now Brown C has an asterisk nest next to it, which means it also has another session. So Brown C is two sessions and you need to attend both. So make sure you're doing that. And this is outlined in the program catalog as well. After that, I am going to take swimming merit badge in the afternoon. And on the off block session of that, I'm going to take leather work because I'd like to take a knife home, knife pouch home to uh, share it with the rest of my family. So afternoon sessions, these are your troop activities and they're going to rank their top 10 choices here. Now, my favorite thing to do at camp is the aqua, aqua trampoline, and there's a whole bunch of different choices here to the right. So they can scroll over. There's more choices here than they have time for in a given week, but this is just to rank their choices um, if they want. Now, on this far side, you'll see that there are some merit badges available. We are going to be allowing troops to book one merit badge for the afternoon. These are our less popular badges, and you need to have a minimum of eight scouts in this to make um, to book a staff member to do this for you. So um, I'm pretty set on doing bird study because I think that that would be pretty cool, but that would be my one badge that I'll do. And then I'll just continue doing my rank choices here the rest of the way. Shotgun will be on my fourth. Orienteering is pretty fun. Of course, I want to go to logging camp. Ice cream outpost, horseback riding, yes. And then I'm gonna do rifle shooting. That's my 10th choice. And then I'm going to continue down. So I've done my morning session badges. I've taken care of my afternoon. But what if I'm an older scout? Now, older scouts, if they want to do high adventure or older scout programs, uh, they can take these programs as well as doing merit badges. And these merit badges, uh, they can take the merit badges or they can choose not to do the merit badges. If I was an older scout and say I don't have any merit badges that I need to take, instead of selecting Brown C, I can select I would like to do high adventure or older scout activities during this time. Or some scouts that are serving as an SPL or um, um, junior assistant scoutmaster, they might not be planning on doing anything and just helping other scouts. So if they select I would like to do high adventure or older scout activities during this time, that signals to us, uh, the camp staff, that we can schedule them for older scout activities during that time. Now, our older scout activities are pretty much going to cover uh, the entire time between meals. So when you're signing up for those and you're setting a time in the morning for that, make sure that you're picking something that's in the same block. So if you're selecting that you want to do high adventures or older scout activities during the merit badge time in the morning, uh, if you select a 1A block, make sure you're doing 2A as well. If you select 1B, make sure you also select 2B. That will make our job easier. But older scout programs are available in a lot of other times. Now, let's just go up and change my preferences here in my age. Let's say I am 13. So now I'm eligible for older scout programs. And I scroll back down and I will click yes. I am 13 years of age and I would like to uh, do high adventure programs. And I'll go to the next session section. Now this section has is very similar to the troop activity choices for the afternoon, but it lists all of our entire suite of older scout activities. So everything from here. So read these carefully in the descriptions in the program catalog, but a scout will be able to rank their choices here. Now I would like to do the ATV riding safety course. And then after that, I'd like to also do an ATV trail ride. So since I've done Tier one, I will have also be able to do the tier two. Of course, I wanna be on the aqua rig and I really like biking. So I am going to do tier one, tier two and tier three. I'd like to do the offsite trip. And that's about all I'd wanna do. So I can also check, I'm not interested in any more choices. And I can check that down the line and that would conclude my selection. You could select one for all 10 of the choices. Um, and then there's another spot here for older scout notes. So if there's some sort of information that your scouts think that they need to let you know, um, that they really wanna do programs with Billy Scout, they can submit that here. So now once I submit this, 
program uh, response has been recorded, a automatic message is going to be emailed to the camp coordinator or the scoutmaster, whatever email address that they put in. All right, here's the email that I had received from the system. And you'll see that it has my name and all of my patrol information all the way down embedded into the email. There's also an attached program preferences for Brian Halloran. And if you open that up, you'll find uh, a PDF link here with all that information stacked a little bit more neatly. So you can see my morning preferences and merit badge selections. You can see my afternoon sessions and how those are all ranked out. And then my older scout sessions and what I'd like to do there. So you can save this in one spot, collect all of your scouts, and then all of your information, all of their preferences, and all it's all in one spot. And you can use this to make your final afternoon troop selections as you get closer to camp. Um, but the biggest tool for this is just being able to gather that information from your scouts. So that we hope that this is a useful tool and that uh, scouts are able to use this um, proficiently. Okay, if you're watching this, you're already on your way. You've been attending and watching the summer camp orientation, which is listed under February. Things that you should be doing um, or have been doing already is make sure that you're looking at the camp coordinator job description, uh, making sure that you understand what that is. Um, is that person you? Is it somebody else? Make sure that you're updating your estimated attendance amount. Um, you'll be doing this through the scouting event system, and this is able, you can do this right now. Um, you can add additional contacts to your reservation right now to get making sure that there's people there getting this information as more information comes out. Uh, looking at the minimum requirements to attend camp. Um, you should be encouraging everybody to get a camp physical. You need a camp physical every single year. And so now is the time to make sure that everybody knows that they should be scheduling that. Doctors are doing physicals right now. Um, I know a number of doctors that are doing physicals. They're doing them in person. Some of them are doing telehealth. Um, make sure that all your families understand what the camp fees are. They'll get that when you send them the camp catalog. Um, Family Island, make sure that they know about that because now is the time to book those cabins. Those cabins are available to book right now and it is first come first serve. The only thing that they need and to be eligible to book is a troop. Their troop needs to have a current reservation and if you're watching this right now they probably do. And then if you have any scouts that are uh, 15 or 16 and they want to be a CIT or on staff, it's a really good opportunity for them uh, to continue the scouting path and become a leader at camp. Uh, in February, I'll watch the camp orientation. I'll talk a little bit more in a bit about the upcoming Q&A session. Uh, you can start booking your campsite for summer 2022 right now. So you and only you can book your campsite for the same week in the next year in 2022. Send that program catalog out to everybody. Start talking about swim tests, maybe lock down a location and a date so that you can get those swim tests done ahead of time, though we will provide them at camp if you need them. Uh, plan that March camp promotion meeting. So when you go into March, hosting that summer camp promotion meeting is key, making sure that information is in front of people. Camperships, good. Get commitments from your scouts, put it down on a list, have them fill out that program planning survey online. Um, Make sure that they understand how to sign up for programs and collect their interests. Make sure you're getting all that information in and following up with scouts. Uh, familiarize yourself with all the forms and documents on the website. And you can start submitting youth deposits online through the month of March. Those are due April 15th. Populate your online roster. You want to do this in March so that when programs open up in April 1st, that you will be ready to sign them up for programs that you're not trying to put in names and ages and all of that information. So the first step in confirming your registration and confirming your estimated accounts is to log into the reservation site. Now currently we are on the Tomahawk website. This is not the registration site. This is a place for us to have information for folks. And uh, if you can't find your confirmation email through the registration system, you can navigate through the Tomahawk website as if you were going to make a reservation and uh, that will help you get to the registration site. 
So your first step is going to be going to res reservations and fees and then click on reserve a campsite and then there'll be a link for the three different sub camps. Now for this example we'll pretend that we're camping in Sioux camp so we'll navigate to the Sioux campsite. Now under this lookup registration piece, of course you can log in if you remember your credentials, but you can also do a lookup. And you can look up your registration by using your registration contact email. So this should be your email or your camp coordinator's email address, and then your reservation number. Now if you don't have your reservation number or you don't know what it is, you can simply say forget your registration number, and then the system will email your contact person uh, your registration number and give you a link to log in from there. But if we click on view registration, this should bring us to uh, our registration during week eight next summer. So you'll see here the number of estimated numbers that you had put on your previous uh, form when you had signed up and we can adjust these up or down at this time and the number of adults and part-time adults. Adults, you don't have to worry as much about it at this point because you can adjust those without any deposits later on. I'm really concerned with the youth number. So your next step is going to be confirming participants. So here you'll see an overall summary. This is the total summary if you totaled up all the costs. You have a $100 deposit in currently, that is a credit. Now you can choose to allocate this credit um, to different scouts at this time, which would look like this, participant one, participant two. You could distribute this evenly amongst everybody, but I would recommend that you hold on to that and allocate it for, to cover any incidental costs like trading post charges or any other uh, horseback rides or shooting sports fees that you may incur at camp. So you see a balance due and a pending early discount, which is currently being credited to you, uh, assuming that you'd pay full payment before June 1st. So we're going to skip this allocate existing $100 payment piece and we're going to go down here to payment options. We'll go to pay the $200 uh, minimum fee and that's the $25 youth deposit for each of those um, each of the youth that you have registered. So we're going to go to checkout We'll confirm some billing details, we'll agree to that, and we'll put in our card information. And we'll finalize our payment. So at this point, you can see now we have amount paid of $25 on each of these youth campers and now they've been added into our registration. We can update information for our registration contact person and you can do this before confirming your estimated numbers. But you can update the contact person, you can change email addresses here, you can even add additional email addresses for other adult leaders that may be doing important items for your troop and be in the planning process. This means that we'll get notifications of any changes to your account and it's another person that we can reach out to with any questions. You can update your address and your phone number information here. Um, you can even in fact adjust your campsite if so you so choose. We'll go ahead and save that information and then we can move on to our scouts. Now uh, you'll have plenty of time to update your scouts information and you can do this leading up to the registration time, but you'll have plenty of time to get this information in so you won't have to worry about this when it comes time to signing them up for programs. Right now it's just basic information and in our parent portal tutorial we can show you how to give a parent access to this information so that they can go ahead and do this for you. Once you have the payment parent portal set up, parents can also submit the full payment amount uh, left on the balance. And that is the updating your estimated attendance information as well as paying youth deposit information and how you can do that. Youth deposit payments will have to be made by the troop initially, but then any payments after that can be made by individual families by use of the parent portal. 
you're going to submit the older scout program requests in the system, submit your youth deposits. On April 15th at 11.59, the program requests are going to be paused in the scouting event system. So that whole system is going to be paused for four days while I receive all of the older scout program requests uh, in everybody's interests. And I'll sit with my team and we're going to hash out the entire older scout schedule for the entire summer. We're going to figure out, you know, uh, what's going to work week by week. Every single week's Older Scout program schedule is going to be different, and we're going to figure that all out. We're going to put it into the system and schedule all of your scouts into those based on their program preferences. At, on April 20th at noon, that program registration is going to open up again, and you'll start seeing scheduled Older Scout programs in the schedule and you'll be able to sign up more scouts for those if for whatever reason they didn't get you their program requests beforehand. Uh, in April you're ordering custom t-shirts, make sure that you're advertising that work party, and start talking about service projects at camp. And you can start signing up for those service projects online and requesting a project to do in your campsite or a different project around camp. May 1st is that priority reservation deadline for the summer 2022. So if you put in your request for the same campsite for the same week, by that time, you're good to go. Uh, after that time period, it opens up as first come, first served, and any other troop could book your campsite if you haven't already. Um, talk about campsite equipment for units. Uh, you will be able to request tents and cots. Um, tarps will be pretty tight this year again because we'll have to put a bunch around Chippewa Dining Hall. Um, but uh, we'll have plenty of tents for people. Some people bring their own, uh, some people use ours. You can start submitting those afternoon activity requests to do as a troop, things like uh, swimming or troop boating or rifle shooting or troop climb. And in May, we're gonna do a, another COVID-19 Q&A session slash training session. By this point, we anticipate that we'll have more information to really kind of give definitive uh, mitigation strategies and uh, go through all the nitty-gritty um, kind of rules around that and uh, give everybody a clearer picture of some of the things like you know what are our campfires going to look like and is there going to be a, a gathering at the flagpole every single day um, you know how many people can sit on a picnic table uh, things like that we know that camp is going to run we're planning for individual choice um, but there are some other details that we haven't ironed out yet because we are just kind of waiting to see uh, what the condition of the pandemic is at that time. June 1st is our full payment uh, deadline. So to be eligible for the early bird discount, which is that 306 level, you need to have your full payment submitted by June 1st. And that's also when campership requests are due. Uh, one month beforehand, you're going to be reviewing packing lists with scouts, making sure that they know about medications and where those got to be. Your medications need to be in original containers, um, and they they need to be with one designated person in the troop unless a parent is at camp and that parent is handling those. Um, you know, making sure that you understand what that is and that you've designated somebody to administer those medications uh, at the appropriate time. Make sure you're doing your bear and wildlife training with your unit, uh, organizing carpooling to and from camp. Uh, who are the drivers going to be? Who's driving themselves? Um, what time are you leaving? Uh, make sure your parents know, you know where to mail stuff at, at camp and what the time frame is for mailing packages to camp. It usually takes three days for something they get from the Twin Cities to camp. Um, Amazon a little bit quicker, but um, if they need to call, how do they get a hold of us? Who's going to have cell service at camp? Who's got T-Mobile? Uh, sorry, who's got AT&T coverage or Verizon? Um, confirm your, your equipment requests and collect your health forms. And just a reminder that we do need to keep health forms. We are required by law to keep them in the state of Wisconsin for two years. So please make copies of those health forms because we will keep a copy. So we want your copies, you should keep the originals. You should be checking in on people for their ATV hold harmless releases, their ATV e-course certifications, making sure that they've been doing that if they plan on riding ATVs. Uh, finalize your partial week adult attendance. That'll give us firm food count 
plans and uh, make sure that parents, everybody knows what the travel plan is. Once you're at camp, um, there's a certain amount of documents that you need to turn in upon arrival um, in your sub camp. We're going to do check-in the same way that we did last year. You'll go right on past the welcome center. You'll get settled in on your campsite and then your commissioner or another staff member is going to come around to do a tour. Once that staff member is there and takes all the scouts to do a tour, uh, one adult leader with all of the paperwork, including health forms, is going to go check in within your sub camp, probably outside the dining shelter or outside the dining hall, uh, some centralized place in camp. And you'll drop all of those items off. So you'll be able to go in and set your campsite up right away and then take care of the paperwork shortly thereafter. Um, we'll have text message services again, so you want to sign up for that when you're at, up at camp. Um, and uh, make sure you have a plan for transportation around camp. So anytime that someone, the bus is not going to be running this year. So if you got to get to the welcome center with scouts, an adult leader is going to have to provide that transportation. And like we did last summer, we'll allow you to park one vehicle uh, at the entrance to the campsite to make that more convenient and easier. Um, keep tracking on your medication logs. We need to record any time that somebody who is not the parent of a scout administers medication to them, and we'll have to collect that as a log book at the end of the week. Um, commissioners will be coming by every single day. Merit badge uh, program supplies will be available at the beginning of that merit badge, and you'll be uh, you'll be billed for that automatically through the um, scouting event system. And uh, billing at the end of the week is going to be a lot easier through the scouting event system. Technically, you'll be able to pay your final bill on your phone, in your campsite, if you really want to. So that'll streamline things. And we're once again, we're going to have badge pickup at Central Services on Friday afternoon. And that'll be your final um, kind of billing review if you'd like to have one but all patches will be picked up at central services instead of in your individual trading posts we found that having all of the merit badges and segments in one place made managing that inventory um, a lot easier and we didn't have any shortages of badges because of that so uh, we'll continue to do that and it worked out pretty slick there's wi-fi up there and a printer so it makes it really easy to fill out your advancement reports and we'll have picnic tables and ample Wi-Fi available for people up there. Um, if you have any adults that need to check in with work periodically throughout the week, um, the working remotely from camp seems to be a more, more common thing. And uh, one thing to share with your adult leaders is that we do have an open Wi-Fi network at the Welcome Center, but the fastest and most reliable internet is at Central Services. That's uh, in the same location as Navajo. There are picnic tables just outside, which are within spitting distance of the router. And uh, there are some really strong speeds. So if anybody has to be on a video call um, or has some larger data uh, to, to work with remotely, that is the place to do it. It's at Central Services at Navajo. That's where my office is. Um, that's where the rest of our administrative staff are. And that's where the fastest internet is. And there's also access to printers. Uh, there are also laundry services in the basement of that building. So if you had somebody doing some work and they also needed to do some laundry for the troop to wash rags or anything else, uh, the occasional sleeping bag, that's the place that they can do it. So that was our leaders planning checklist. Uh, there is a mirrored version of this on the website under planning for camp. And uh, there are links included that will bring you to instructional pages that can show you how to do this and link you to the different documents and forms that are referenced in it. So next week on February 10th, I'll be offering two different Q&A sessions to review the questions that you still have. Um, and there are two different options for this. There's a noon session and there's a 7 p.m. at night session. We're offering two for your convenience. I'm not expecting that anybody attend both of these sessions. Uh, both of these are going to be recorded. I imagine there's going to be a lot of similar questions. Um, in this brand live presentation, there is a comment section on the right hand side. Feel free to type any questions that you have into there and I will use those as a starting point to feed the, the questions and answers in these sessions on the 10th. So once again, two options, 
a noon lunch hour session and a 7 p.m. session. I don't anticipate that either one of these will go more than an hour, and I will be recording all of these. If you have an urgent question that needs to be answered right now um, and specific to your troop, uh, in the top left-hand corner here, there's an email address, info at camptomahawk.org. Both myself and Emily Heidelberg, who is the camping assistant that uh, manages a lot of our registrations, uh, we both answer that. So if you have any pressing questions, you can do that. Uh, feel free to give me a phone call as well. I can be reached at 612-261-2456. Uh, Emily's phone number is 612-261-2456. Two four six zero, uh, and we're available during business hours to help you out with that. Feel free to give us a call if you're stumped on a question and need some help, or you're having some problems with the system. Thank you for watching the summer camp orientation for Tomahawk Scout Reservation. I'm looking forward to a great summer next year. I know that we'll have some challenges along the way, and there's still some questions to be answered but I'm looking forward to getting over those challenges together and coming up with a really great summer camp program for everyone. I look forward to seeing everybody's questions leading up to the Q&A sessions on February 10th. Please submit those to the comments area in this presentation and tune in for one of those to get more information. We'll talk to you then and stay scouting.